Hello everyone, this is a Cowboy 2011. Today, I want to give you my first impressions on Kotalkan's MKX debut. We knew he was in the game, but we actually got to see gameplay. His trailer wasn't his trailer, it was actually Jackie's trailer. Even though it said Kotalkan, Jackie just took over the show. I don't know why they did that. It would have been cool if it was Kotalkan versus Shao Kahn. You know, two cons are like Kotalkan versus Raiden. You know, I don't know. That's just me. So anyway... I'm just going to give you my thoughts. First one is actually that I love that they incorporated a sword into his strings. That was actually one of my big gripes about War God and actually all the other variations. They actually didn't have any unique streets. There's no, like, Ninjutsu Scorpion where he gained stuff. Um, Lasher Takeda where he gained stuff in the middle of his streams and stuff like that. He just kind of stayed all the same throughout the thing, and that's honestly cool that they did this. His next one, of course, is his parry has returned, and I am, oh, I am so happy. The only thing I want to know is, does it still work on projectiles? I know in MKX, in the very, when the game first came out, his parry actually did not work on projectiles, and they patched it in later. The fact that, if, I hope it does work on projectiles. I really do. And the only other questions I have is, will his parry be a better option than flawless block? The whole flawless box system is you do a flawless block, you push up and two, and you can pop them in the air or up and three to get them off of you. You know, it's the same as your wake-up options. It uses meter, then you get a whole combo off of a flawless block. Will will it be better than, like, the flawless block? Is this parry still going to be better? Is he still going to be able to punish with, like, his 1-1-2 one, one, or 1-2-2? Two, two? I don't remember what they showed in the stream, but will that be better? That's just what I want to know. Next up is we have the totems have returned. A total of four totems this time, which is actually pretty cool. First thing that we got to mention is totem stack. Stacking totems, and as they said, you can only stack two, so you can't have, like, damage, blood, and defense. It'll have to be damage, blood, damage, or, like, damage, defense, damage, or defense, blood, defense, you know, something. Defense, blood, blood, you know, it could be any one of those, it just has to be two, you can't go into three. And he actually has four, so the first one is damage totem returns, second one is the defense totem returns, third one is blood totem, which I actually want to know more about, because in MKX, blood totem, if you get hit while you have it out, it breaks. You don't get the health back, anything like that, it just breaks. Since the totems are stacking, I'm wondering if it actually breaks? Maybe it'll just stay around. That'd actually be really crazy. And the fourth one, and the most one I'm actually concerned about, is the stamina totem. They just barely touched on it, and what it does, it pretty much recharges your defensive and attack meters faster. If you can stack that up three times, it's going to go insanely fast, and I, in my personal opinion, the attack and defense meter already goes up insanely fast. So, imagine having a fighting a Kotokan. He gets this defensive... or. <laughs> Stamina totem stacked up three times. His meter is now insanely high. He can now amplify stuff that he can just amplify. He can now wake up just to wake up. He can actually roll out of combos more often because of this one totem that he's just he's just doing it. So that's the only concern I have is if this totem is broken, it's going to get exploited really bad. They're going to have to make sure the the amount isn't that significant, and even if it's not that significant, there's no point in this totem. I just want to know, like, maybe I'm missing something in the stamina totem. But that's what I am mostly concerned about. Next one is we have the Sun Choke has been replaced. The Sun Choke, he does not burn anyone. He now drinks the blood of the person. He has upgraded <laughs> to one of, my, what, what one of the comments said. He has traded the Sun in, and now he's getting Kool-Aid from people and <laughs> that's that's funny i gotta make a kool-aid variation now like i don't know it's just gonna be funny anyway he gets a damage buff off of this he has three levels um the damage buff he gets doesn't stay like in sun god he doesn't gain the stacks throughout the whole match he gets a damage buff and it lasts only a certain amount of time the more levels you have the longer it lasts and you can keep refreshing it as long as you keep going so you can get to level three and keep doing it and you'll keep refreshing that timer to stay at level three if that makes sense to you his next one is, his 4-2 is now a special move. And I think that's actually going to be one of the one of the moves that every Kotokan is going to have. And here's why. It is a meterless launcher. So imagine doing a, you parry someone, you do a punish, you know, 
you already used your crushing blow, so you know you can't get the hit off of them. But if you do a, this uh, new move, I think they called it Sun Rising Uppercut or something like that. If you do this, he is now up in the air, and he is not at your disposal. Do another string to end it with a totem, um, a Sun Ray setup. Um, what else? The His new Sun Choke, you know, his command grab. Anything you can do is because of this meter to this launcher is going to give you more. So I'm not too sure how the scaling is going to work on that. Well, not, it's going to be more interesting to see. Next thing we have is special moves that might still be in it, because they showed us some special moves. There's still more. You know, there's there's still a lot more, but some that from MKX that they showed didn't make it over. So say his blood offering. Cuts himself across the chest. He takes damage, but he gains more damage for three additional strikes. That could return. His air grab could return. His sword throw could return. Or perhaps maybe it's not a sword throw, but maybe a snake dagger throw. You know, so many things that could return and replace it. And then after that, his son, his original sun choke where he calls down the sun, that could actually return. And in that returning, maybe perhaps... Um, the other moves that complement it, so you can like cash out for more meter, cash out for health, cash out for higher meter regen or something like that, you know. It'd be something along those lines if they were to go in. Another thing that I was kind of a little bit like uh, disappointed in, but you know, it, it could still come back, is his tattoos aren't glowing anymore. They're just white. You know, this could still, it could make it into the game, you know. Maybe, maybe it goes into the game, maybe not. I don't know. It could still, it could be patched in later. Maybe they'll have it where, like I said, it could still be a working plaza dress. And the color of the costume that he's wearing maybe changes the color of his tattoos. Either it being red, blue, black, gray, uh, purple, you know, <laughs> yellow, orange. I don't really know. They could do a lot of things because I, first he hit, uh, he has yellow, blue, and red. Those are the three primary colors. So technically, he should be able to get any color, <laughs> you know, if he really wants to. Or perhaps maybe doing certain moves will make his tattoos light up, like when he's drinking blood, if they just glow red for a second or something like that. Or when he's doing a grab, you know, they glow yellow and stuff like that. Or when he's doing his uh his what is it called this pizza which is actually brand new maybe they glow yellow because it's technically a sewn totem you know i don't know they have a lot of options still that they could do that this could be actually be patched in if they really didn't wanted it to be something like that or if they just wanted to keep it white it's honestly their decision and whatnot and for his actually regular special moves are actually cool his parry's coming back you know that's honestly amazing he they what got me really worried is at the beginning they're like Kotal Khan is a 50-50 character in MKX and I was like oh god don't say that don't make him a 50-50 character I hate playing 50-50 characters and that's actually why I stepped away from Blood God in MKX I don't play Blood God because I hate I hate uh, having the feeling of like I won because you guessed wrong I hate that feeling like that's just me personally that's why I don't play War God, because it's like, I can do a string, then after that they have to worry about an overhead sword or lower head sword. Then there's a string with a low in it, they have to worry about another low following that, or an overhead. Or I stop it to do an overhead, you know. I don't like having people guess, and that's why I hated Sonya Blade Commando, was it Commando? In MKX, because after she went to a stash, she could do overhead, lower grab. Three options that you're just like, well, I... I better guess right, you know, and when they said that, I actually got a little bit scared, I was like, oh god, don't change him into a 50-50 guy, please, and they didn't, which is good, um, he's not projectile heavy, awesome, he actually has everything I loved about Kotal Khan in MKX, him being, like, his normals being advancing, um, he has this reach, he's, he's probably going to be a punish character, that's what I describe it, Kotal Khan in MKX just playing, um, the Sun God and Blood God especially. He is a punish character. He is make he's punishing you for doing something bad. So um he's not saying he's not punishing you for guessing wrong. He's punishing you because you pushed a button when he was plus. Um he is punishing you because you did a move and it was negative and now he's coming to hit you like a truck. That's what he still looks like in MK eleven. And as far as uh, Jaguar, that's actually really cool. I'm actually interested if he has a Jaguar. It's more like a dash. You know how he runs full screen. I want to know if that can go under projectiles. If it does, that would be amazing. You know, because um, showing against Jackie Briggs, she didn't have any straight shot, straight missile shot. She only had a low, then when you meter burned it, it was a straight shot. She only had a high one, then when you meter burned it, it was a straight shot. So they didn't really get a show if that goes under projectiles or anything like that. Um, And I, that's actually just interesting to me. And 
since he can turn into a Jaguar, it opens up so many, so many more options from that, what he could do, you know, um, it's actually really cool. Another thing that was pretty interesting in the trailer, or in the breakdown, not really the trailer, is his forward grab is like he grabs him, he summons the sun, he just holds him in the sun, then he like headbutts him. And his forward throw actually does 16%, no buffs anyone, 16%. And his back throw does 14%. So I'm not too sure why. Maybe that's some... The sun is messed up. Is the sun doing more damage? I don't know in that build. But it just seems a little weird that um his forward throw does more than his back throw. You know, I, I'm not too sure if that's a mistake or anything like that. But yeah, overall, I'm going to play Kotal. I was a little bit worried as soon as they said 50-50, like I said, I was like, maybe I'm not going to play Kotal. Maybe I have to go to another con and that'd be Shout Con. But after watching his gameplay... Oh yeah, Kotal Khan's coming back for MK11. I will be the first one, or one of the first ones, to get, like, to actually play him. I'll have videos out and stuff like that, and if I still can't find anything good, I'm going to steal people's tech, like I always do. There's always stuff I find that are like, hey, that's cool, but this one's better, you know. It's pretty interesting stuff. Kotal Khan is making his return. It's going to be amazing. You know, like I said, I can actually make a Blood God variation, a Sun God variation. Well... Sun God, I I hope, for the original one. If not, then we're making a Kool-Aid Man, where every time he drinks, it's going to be like an, oh yeah, or something like that. I don't know. But um, I'm going to have a lot of fun with his variations, you know. And his basic kit uses his sword. You know, he gets his... He gets a low um, sword hit, where she like stabs the ground and like creates a crack in the earth and shows it, and if you meter burn, it goes low overhead. And... Like, I want to do that, but at the same time, like, I know once I do it, and someone flawless blocks it, I'm going to be like, oh shit, like, like, I shouldn't do that anymore. But yeah, it should be interesting. So like, his 4-2, his new special move, I feel like that's going to be a go-to move for Kotal, and his command grab. I'm pretty sure his command grab is going to take up two slots of the variation, so it's going to be his 4 2 and his command grab. And that's going to be actually just one variation in itself. You know, if his forward two is one slot. If it's two slots, then maybe you can't get a forward two and um, command grab. I don't know. I'm assuming this is all assuming his command grab is two slots. Like I said, how good it looks with his tech throws that he can do. i assuming it's going to be two slots. I can actually make a blood god. This time with four totems, and I'm hoping that um they're each one. From what, they, from what he showed, it's acting like he's pairing blood, the blood totem and the damage totem are one thing. And then after that, the defensive totem and stamina totem are another thing you have to equip. So I'm hoping they don't like, um, what is it called? Overlap, where it's like, if you use this, these two totems, you can't use these two totems. That's the only thing I'm, I really don't want. I hope it's like I can use all four of them just to have fun with it. You know, if it happens to be like that, then I guess I'm going to damage and blood. Which would really suck because I want damage certain times and you want defense on the other times. You want the blood, you know, you want them all at certain times in the match. To limit it to, to only have two out of the four seems really limiting. And hopefully, like I said, I can equip all four. If I can, I hopefully those are only one spots, you know, one for these two totems and one for this other totem. And then after that, maybe equip a four or two. Then you can get real crazy. Like, if this is all if, if those totems are separated. Like, kind of how I think they are, because he didn't show any of those other totems, so I'm assuming they're separated. If you can get, like, the damage and blood totem, and pair that up with a command grab, you're going to have some crazy damaging combos, and he's going to be drinking blood whenever he is drinking blood, he's going to have his blood totem up, he's going to throw it, he's going to heal off of it, it's just, you know, it's going to be awesome awesome to see i can't wait as for the other ones didn't really interest me like his um meter bird sun totem where he like throws it like a distance didn't really interest me that one he had a uh, one where he like he does it and it's like uh reflecting off the sun it was cool and i'm actually really interested if that's a restand because how it burned him and how he flailed around like a uh, scarlet's blood ball is a restand maybe that is if that is then that opens up a lot of potential once again that's only if that is. But other than that, it didn't really interest me. And another thing is, um, what else was there? Oh, he held the sun, the sun totem up, the, you know, the pizza. And it was above his head that when he made her burned it, he hit himself away. Which would be cool in combos if you can get him above you. Like, you know, get him above you, do that, 
it hits them, you're still a plus, and you can somehow keep juggling them. But other than that, I'm not too sure what you'd want it for. Like, I'm not too sure how good of an anti-air would be. A, it's, like, directly above your head, and he's a tall guy, <laughs> you know? He's especially, he, he seems huge in this one. But anyway, he's a tall guy, so I'm not too sure if you really want to do that, because... Not that many people are going to actually get above you. If this was someone like Jackie that was small and she did something above her head, that would be amazing. But Kotal Khan's so big, I I honestly can't say if I like it or if I don't. It just depends all on what the game comes out. As for his other costumes, really sick, dude. Really sick. I am still disappointed that he didn't uh, didn't get um, his tattoos didn't change colors. The fact that his tattoos are actually changing in his... <laughs> In each costume is insane to me, and of course, like um, I didn't like the one where he didn't have any war paint on. That's just me, you know. I he just didn't look right. I'm like, oh, dude, you, you kind of look like Black Adam from Injustice. <laughs> you know, he didn't look right to me. But uh, yeah, that's just what I think. Um, his customizable gear one's of course going to be his sword. You know, even though it was metal, I'm pretty sure you can actually get the original blade from MKX. I can't remember what it's called, but it has obsidian wood. It's a wood blade with obsidian. It's an obsidian blade with wood, like, in the middle of it. I can't remember the name. Oh, that sucks. But I'm pretty sure you could probably get that one. His other one's probably going to be his helmet, since everyone has some sort of mask uh, customization. You know, Baraka has a mask customization. Sub-Zero, Scorpion, do. Scarlet does. I'm just going to assume that Cuddle's helmet is what he customizes. And his first third one, I don't really know what it could be. Like, um... I I really don't know. Usually it's another weapon of some sort. So if I had to guess anything, maybe his snake daggers? You can change those, perhaps? I'm not too sure. I'd have to go back and look and see if the daggers are different between each variation he switched to, or if they're just the same. But, yeah, those are my impre first impressions on Kotal Kahn. I can't wait. I literally can't wait. Like I said, this is everything when I originally fell in love with Kotal Kahn and MKX coming back to MK11. And just to let you know, the first time I actually fell in love with Kotal Kahn was actually in Reign's Reveal Train in MKX. And that's before we actually knew everything, anything about it, because people were speculating that he was Shao Kahn's ancestor and stuff like that, which was, <laughs> seemed legit at the time, since he, how he looked. But, you know, this is just how we, we didn't know anything, and just seeing him now, what he's evolved to, oh, I hope, I hope he's sick. I hope so. So anyways, God, this is going to be a long video. What is it like? 17 minutes long already? Yeah, going on 18. So, yeah, that actually about does it. I actually want to hear what you guys think of Kotal. Because when this comes out, <laughs> I might actually do something like viewer variations. Where it's like, hey, assign me a variation. I will try my best to do with the tools that you give me. I don't know, that'd be cool. <laughs> you know, the fan god, fan god, god of fans, I don't know. Anyways, guys, this is a Cowboy... 2011, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!